I am the marketing manager here at iMatrix, and today we're going to go ahead and go over using video to spotlight your business online. So a lot of people ask this question, you know, how do I use video properly? What do I need to do um, to get that video on YouTube, on my website? You know, what's the use of it? What's the point of it? Well, a lot of people kind of thought about it, and a lot of people might have been thinking about adding video to your website to showcase your practice, um, maybe showcase the business online but you really haven't gotten around to do it. So we're going to kind of go over some tips and what you need to do and why it's important to really spotlight your business using video, especially with mobile being such a huge emphasis this year, uh, with Google changing a lot of their algorithm to, uh, to accommodate mobile as well. Um, a lot of people are going to be using mobile to search for your business and your practice, and having some video is going to be um, in digestible uh, bits, I guess you could say. They're uh, edible chunks, as I like to call them. A lot of people don't want to read too much, so video, a picture is worth a thousand words, but a video is probably worth a million words if you think of it that way. So um, maybe you have a lot of unique content on your website. You know, you really don't really think adding video is going to be uh, worth your effort. But again, you might want to fill things out on your website. You might want to fill things out about your practice and kind of see what areas of your practice you can probably videotape or record, um, whether it's an actual camcorder or your mobile device. Pretty much anything nowadays will be able to take a quality that's, that's good enough for you to put online to your business. And remember, your website is going to be the window to your business. You want to make sure that it looks professional and looks very nice, just the same way you want to have your office and your clinic and your practice um, look just as nice for people that walk in. You want to have your website as well as the videos and everything look just as good. So, you know, if you're going to go and take videos of your practice, make sure that everything is clean, everything looks good and tidy. Um, and that you don't have things just kind of laying around, um, just, as if, just as if you were to have a client come in and kind of, I guess, audit your practice for cleanliness or, or just professionalism. Um, you want to have it portrayed in the video as well. So again, we're going to go ahead and go over a few things. We're going to go ahead and talk about 90-second documercial and 15-second ad slide. We're also going to talk about a custom YouTube channel. Monthly analytic reports, which are very important, so you know if the video is working properly, if you know uh, if you're going in the right direction with it. Maybe people aren't as interested as you thought they would be. Maybe the video is too long, that kind of thing. Uh, website and social media integration. You want to make sure it's not only on the website, but you also want to have it on your social media as well. And uh, professionally produced video and photography, which, of course, we do offer. But again, if that's something that you're going to go down that route with, make sure that you do choose a company that um, does that not too expensive, but does it professionally. And again, we do have that here at our matrix. We do offer that. But if you know some people, maybe some friends, some colleagues that do this as well, just make sure that they know that your goals, um, that they're aligned with what your goals are for this uh, project, that they're aligned with how you want your practice to be portrayed online and through video. So, oops, there we go. Sorry about that. So if you're really not convinced that video is a critical component of your online marketing strategy, these following statistics are probably going to demonstrate otherwise. So 90% of users say that seeing a video about a product or service is helpful in the decision process. And I think that's really important because a lot of people don't realize that how impactful video can be. Anytime I look for a product personally, if I'm on Amazon or if I'm looking for a specific service or whatnot, um, I'm going to use a dentist for an example. Um, they, I might not want to see videos of the procedure being done. I mean, who wants to see that, you know? Uh, but some people might, might want to see, you know, a virtual tour, a video virtual tour that they can see of your practice. They might want to be able to kind of just have a quick walkthrough. Maybe it's a, a 90 second uh, little ad or whatnot that you have on your website that they can kind of see what your practice looks like from the inside. Uh, maybe get a couple candid shots of the employees, that kind of thing. Um, you want to make sure that everything is portrayed that you want to have portrayed in this video. And once you put it online, again, it's there and it's out to the public. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have people view that video. So not only having it on YouTube, but also having it on your website, maybe having it on the home page, um, also having it on social media, that kind of thing. Social media is actually going to be great because it's going to reach a lot of people that you normally don't reach out to. Um, again, for social media, people that like your page, if they comment or like on anything that you post on your business page, their friends and family will see it. So it helps to expand um, your reach that way. And it's free, essentially. You know, uh, you, um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, those are all free, so make sure you make use of those. Video increase, uh, videos increase people's understanding of your service by 74%. Now, for instance, if you're a chiropractor, let's just say, and you have uh, a bunch of stretches that you want people to know about and that are really good for, you know, people that work 
um, just like any any other person does, you know, uh, nine to five or whatever the, the hours may be in the office, um, you know, sitting at their desk, hunched over, keyboard, you know, their posture's not great, you know, they, they always feel tight, you know, if they're into sports, anything like that, uh, whether it's chiropractic, if it's optometry, uh, different things that you maybe want to showcase on your website or on your YouTube channel, maybe frequently asked questions, you know, um, for a veterinarian, it's, it's really simple, you know, how to properly, um, you know, give your cat medicine, you know, uh, or brush your, your dog's teeth. Those kind of things are things that people wonder, how can I do that at home? How can I do this so that not necessarily have to go into the office to do it, but maybe I just don't have the time and it's something that's really simple that I could easily do. How to, how to trim your pet's, um, you know, uh, claws, how to, how to do anything really. Um, it, it's going to, how to properly clean your contact lenses. I mean, I could probably come up with a whole long list of different things that you can come up with videos on, but these are going to be things that people will kind of look at and understand that you're the authority, that you understand what's going on with that industry and with that business, and it makes them feel more comfortable in the buying decision. Um, I do that all the time personally. I'm sure anyone here does it as well. When you try to buy something, you look at the reviews, but then if they have a video, you definitely want to watch the video as well because it's, it's in an edible chunk and it's something that you can consume and understand more than just a huge page of content. But again, don't disregard the content. They work very well, uh, very well in tandem together. 80% um, of your online visitors will watch a video while only 20% will actually read written content to its entirety. Again, it's exactly what I was mentioning. People want to see the video more so than read the content. It might take them five, who knows, even maybe 10 minutes to read a piece of content, depending on how fast they can read. Uh, but with a video, if you put that in an hour, or sorry, an hour, uh, a minute, a minute and a half, don't do it an hour, uh, it's easier for them to consume it and they can understand it better. Um, so you want to make sure that you do it that way and it's not going to be something that is going to be too long and too lengthy for them to feel like they have to take time to sit there and read. Um, and then last but not least, your website's 50 times more likely to appear on the first page of a search engine results page if it includes video. Now, a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people can actually put, uh, if you put video on your homepage, now, when someone's searching for you on Google, they're not only going to pull up your website, they're going to pull up specific pages of your website. And so you might have a bunch of service pages on all the different services that you provide. And of course, your homepage, which your homepage is kind of the meat and potatoes. It's going to kind of welcome people to the website, kind of give them an idea of what the website has to offer, what your business has to offer. And a lot of times you might have a video on the homepage for multiple different reasons, for SEO reasons. One, because it's going to kind of consume that whole page of content into a small minute long or minute and a half long video. Or two, um, or and I should say two, uh, it actually helps to, to add a sticky factor to your website. Now what that means is basically people will go on your website, they see a video, instantly like a moth to a flame, they're going to want to click on it to kind of see what it's about. And again, if it's short enough, they're going to sit there and they're going to be engaged with the video. Now, what that does is it adds a couple things. One, it allows them to consume that content easier through video. Two, it's also going to add to your uh, page site time. So what that does is Google looks at that and considers that as one of the SEO ranking factors. And of course, when someone sees a video and they stay on a website, anytime someone searches for something on Google, they see a bunch of links, they see a bunch of web pages pull up. You click on you click on that web page, you go to the home page, you decide that that website's not really for you, you click out of the web page, you go to another website, Google's going to consider that a bounce. Now, having a high bounce rate is not really good. And what a bounce rate is, is again, anytime someone goes to a web page or a, a, a website, they basically don't engage with anything, they don't really click on any links, go to any pages, they literally, it's like walking into a door, into a party, uh, that you really didn't mean to go into, or, or if you guys remember back in you know high school or whatnot or college, maybe accidentally on your first day you go to a, a class and you're like, oops, wrong class, and then you exit out. That's literally a bounce, if you want to kind of put it figuratively. So Google looks at that as being irrelevant content. They look at that as, oh, that website's irrelevant to what this person searched for. So if someone has a high bounce rate, that's telling Google, this website's really not what people are looking for. So let's just downrank it. Let's, let's slowly remove it off the first page or the second page or wherever it's at so that way it doesn't confuse people. Now, Google's, Google's uh, biggest thing right now is making sure that their website is, or that their search results are relevant to people. Um, they want to make sure that everyone is able to get the most relevant content possible the easiest way and the fastest way. 
So adding video is going to allow them to stay on your website a little bit longer, and it's going to add to that page rank, uh, that page time, I should say, the on-site page time, and it's going to add to your SEO value. So again, SEO is a little tricky. It's a lot of different facets, but video is going to be a big portion of that. And not only that, if it's on YouTube, Google owns YouTube, and they love when you use their products. So when someone searches for you, they'll not only pull up your homepage, they might also pull up multiple other pages of your website, and also maybe a video snippet. So if you've ever seen a video on a search results page, that's essentially how that works. Now, a lot of people think they can only be pulled up one time on Google. You can be pulled up multiple times, which in essence increases your uh, search results page real estate. So that way, you know, if there's 10 results on a, on a first page and you have maybe three of those, you know, one being your home page, maybe two service pages, and then a video, you're going to dominate that whole first page, and that's better even than being number one. Let's say you're not even number one and you're struggling, but you own spots two, three, and maybe six, and then maybe you have in between there, you have a video snippet there. I would not complain. I mean, you're literally owning that whole first page. And to me, having one result on the first uh, result of uh, the first page compared to having three or four results on the first page that aren't number one, I would take the second one because you those websites, to me, even being in the industry, tell me that that's more relevant because you have more relevant content available than just that one that's on the first rank. Now, a lot of people ask, why is it that that, that one page on the first rank when I have so many pages that are ranking? Well, to be honest, I mean, it's really kind of multiple factors in that. I mean, it could be the fact that that one website that has the one page on the first page, uh, on the first result has just been there longer. You know, I mean, there's a lot of different things with that. Um, the longer the domain's been registered, the longer that the website's been around, um, there's a lot of different kind of factors in that. Now, it could eventually in time push that top ranking down so that your ranking is up there. But again, um, this is just something that takes a little longer. It's kind of like a credit score. It's not overnight. So it's one of those things where you just have to kind of gauge it and just see over time what happens with that ranking. And if you start to slowly climb up and that one gets pushed down, then you'll understand that your content, again, is being considered more relevant by Google. Uh, but again, Google considers those other factors first and foremost before anything. So um, keep that in mind when you're looking at that. Now, a custom YouTube channel is something that you definitely need to have. If you're going to have video, you want to make sure that you have a custom YouTube channel. So if no one really knew this, now you know, YouTube is actually the number two search engine in the world. A lot of people wonder, well, how is it a search engine? It's a bunch of videos. Well, again, for the whole reason of people wanting to watch video over reading content, uh, YouTube itself is something that people use for searching a lot. I actually am, I'll admit, I'm guilty of being addicted to YouTube. I love YouTube. I will seriously, before any kind of, you know, news websites that I go to, I open up YouTube and I just kind of see what's out there. They have a lot of great videos, awesome content from original web series to um, informational pieces to news. News is actually on YouTube. Um, as far as, you know, channels and whatnot that you need. Um, you can even find your local news channel on YouTube, and they'll actually have clips of relevant pieces. If you don't want to sit at home or, or uh, TiVo uh, record, you know, the news because you missed it in the morning because you had to leave for work, um, they'll actually have those in snippets, in clips, so that you can actually just watch the relevant pieces that you want. So there's a lot of great stuff that's on YouTube. And so anytime someone searches for something, how to tie a tie, how to change a tire on my car, whatever it may be, Will you rather have an article to read, or would you rather have someone show you how to do it on a YouTube video? And again, that's going to be where all these different videos that you guys create are going to come from. Um, FAQs are perfect. Again, you can have an, an FAQ series on your channel where a lot of people ask questions you know, that they normally ask in the office. And if you're not sure what those are, ask your front desk. How, what questions do they get a lot um, in person and on the phone? Um, you know, obviously being the doctor, find out, you know, what, what do your clients ask all the time? You know, a lot of things that, that you maybe take for granted that people maybe ask on a daily or maybe ask on a weekly uh, basis. I mean, maybe write them down and then, and then create a video on that. Um, just kind of like a small, short, you know, 30-second clip if it needs to be. And you can put that on YouTube or, sorry, yeah, put it on YouTube and then put it on your social media. And then, of course, you know, you can have it on a, on a page of your content. Um, if it's about car accident injury, let's just say, you can – you know, what do I do when I get in a car accident? You can kind of just do a quick 30 second or a minute um, answer to that, put it on that car accident injury page, and then at the same time, it'll be on YouTube and maybe even post it as a post on your social media. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. And again, it's all free. It just takes a little bit of time 
And once you have it, it's up there, and then it's set it and forget it, and you're good. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you do anything and everything to have an actual video kind of library, content library, for your website so that you can utilize for future reference as well as just use, utilize it now. Um, what you need to do first off is you need to have an optimized YouTube channel. And once you have a professionally optimized YouTube channel, you'll increase the traffic, the organic traffic to your YouTube channel. Um, again, which is the same type of traffic when someone's searching for something on Google, it'll pull up a bunch of results on the search results page. Same thing with uh, YouTube, they'll search for something, it pulls it up just the same way. Not only that, but it also creates backlinks that direct users to your website. So if someone's on YouTube and they're looking for something, you can actually put in the description, you can put annotations in the video to have it linked directly to your website. So that'll help with your website's ranking as well. And again, Google uses backlinks as one of their ranking factors in their algorithm. So again, that's another plus. And I'm going to be talking about SEO ranking factors throughout this webinar because there's so many facets of SEO that people don't realize. They think it's turning on a flip of a switch. How do I get number one? Really easy. Let me just get a website and it set it and forget it. Well, not at all. That's probably how it used to be, but not anymore. Google's been smarter. They've gotten a lot smarter going forward because of the fact that people are finding ways of getting around Google to get to the top page. They're, they're finding ways of cheating the system, and that's why nobody knows what Google's algorithm is. We only know hints and ideas of what they have changed from the previous one. Uh, so again, that will create backlinks that will allow people to get to your website from your video as well. Um, you want to make sure that the YouTube channel is optimized. You want to make sure that it has relevant keywords. So that way internet users that are searching for those specific keywords can relate to the business and find you on your YouTube channel. So it's the same thing as when someone searches on Google. They're going to be searching for something, maybe a symptom, uh, a question, a phrase. Maybe they are typing in keywords. Uh, but they can do the same thing on YouTube, and that's really kind of what I personally do when I'm searching for something. I'll actually search based off keywords um, on YouTube. And so there's way you can, ways you can optimize the video on YouTube so that it can pull up in that fashion. And you want to make sure it's optimized for each video as well as having your YouTube channel optimized professionally. And then last but not least, of course, geo-targeted ads on YouTube give you thousands and thousands of impressions a month in your local area. This is something that a lot of people aren't too sure about and they don't really understand. So what that means is if in your area you have a bunch of different practices, okay, and you've ever you've you've searched for something, let's just say, let's say you're a veterinarian, okay, and you want to put some geo targeted ads on YouTube. So if you've ever looked at a video and you've seen an ad play before the video plays, um, those are actually paid, that's like paid advertising. That's like PPC for, for YouTube. And basically what it will do and what you're able to do is you're actually able to target specific people in a, a specific demographic. You can actually target people in your local area so that anytime they're on YouTube and they're searching for something, your ad, your little 90 second documercial or video that you have will show up before they actually play the, the, uh, the video that they're looking for. Now some people think, well, why would I want to do that? That's kind of uh, intruding on people when they're, they're not even looking for my business. Well, that's, that's advertising. That's kind of what you want to do. You want to get in front of them because they might not be thinking about it but once you do get in front of them and you kind of make notice to them of, of your practice, then they're going to probably think, you know what, that is actually a good idea. So here's a quick example that maybe everyone can relate to. If you ever get a new car, or let's just say you just don't get a new car in general. Let's say you go and you get your uh, maintenance done at a dealership. What they will do, and it's actually very effective because a lot of people don't realize this, they actually make more money off maintenance of all the vehicles than they actually do of the vehicles themselves, the, the dealership itself. And I'm not talking about the, uh, the corporate, you know, Honda, Toyota, whatever. I'm talking about the actual franchise dealership. They make more, more money off of um, their current customers, about seven times more money off their current customers uh, than actually new customers and, um, and, and selling new cars. Now, that's also included with any used certified vehicles. They make a lot more money off of those and the maintenance than the actual new cars. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because of the fact that they have a big campaign that anytime you buy a car, get a car maintenance from them, they'll send out postcards to you, emails, reminders, hey, don't forget about your first maintenance check, don't forget about your oil change, looks like your tires are going to be, re need to be, uh, you know, rotated or renewed, um, you know, around this time. It's one of those things where it's almost kind of annoying. You get it every week or every month or however long it may be, but you get them and you get them and you get them. And the reason for that is a tactic uh, that basically people will, will kind of plant the seed. And even though they're not looking, it's almost like branding. 
not necessarily looking for a conversion right then and there immediately, but they know that if they kind of get in your head and they know that if, if they're kind of the first person you think of or the first business that you think of, when that time does happen, you're more likely to convert to go to that business. And that's kind of what these geo-targeted ads do. Now, it might involve them actually clicking on the ad, going to a landing page, and going to your practice. But the big long-term effect is the fact that even if they're not looking to go to your practice right then and there, they're going to remember you because of those ads. They're going to remember that, oh, when the time comes, or even think at that time, at that very instance that they see it, you know what, that is actually a good idea. Maybe I do need to schedule an appointment. So it's kind of a win-win in that aspect because, one, it's going to brand your practice. It's going to brand your name out there, and people are going to know about it. They're going to realize that it's actually in their local area, and it's only going to those people in the local area near you. Um, and not only that, it might remind them and just kind of let them know, hey, this is something I actually need to do. Or, you know what, I've been meaning to do that. Let me go ahead and do it. So keep that in mind. You know, if that's something that you're looking to do, make sure overall that you have a YouTube channel first and foremost. And if you're not sure how to do it, if you have a Gmail account or a Gmail email, you're already halfway there. Google's products are all seamless, and they all sync up fantastically. So uh, it's one of those things where you have a Gmail, you already pretty much have a Google Plus profile. Um, you pretty much already have a YouTube channel. Um, and all, all it really needs to do is you just need to kind of finalize the process. And it's really simple to do. If you're really not sure how to do it, again, give us a call. We'll help you out. We actually do this service, uh, do this as a service as well. But again, if it's something that you want to try to do on your own, Give us a call, let us know. We'll kind of step you through the process on what you need to do to get that YouTube channel created uh, and optimized. So that way it's being used to the fullest effect. Next, of course, is you want to make sure that you're actually doing the right thing and you want to make sure that you are not wasting time and you're working smarter and not harder. So with so many different moving parts in your overall marketing plan, you really need to be able to access all the metrics that you can to be able to tell you how your digital marketing efforts are really paying off. And you want to make sure that you have analytics to be able to tell you the number of impressions, views. Now, if you're not really too sure of the difference between impressions and views, let me kind of explain it real quick. An impression is any time, think of it this way, let me see. You search on YouTube. You see your main video, okay? Click on a video, you watch the video. But then you see all the different recommended videos on the right, okay? Those are impressions. Um, same thing with Google, uh, PPC, AdWords PPC. You search, uh, you search for something or anything, let's just say, um, even if it's not PPC, any of the results that are on the search results page that show up, that you visibly see, that's an impression. And that's it. There's nothing, there, there's no conversion involved at the time. There, there's no click, nothing. It's just the fact that it's in front of that person and it's being seen by them. Think of it as a billboard. All a billboard does is impressions. You see it on the side of the road. You see it on the side of the freeway. Now, there's call to actions. There's, way, there's phone numbers. There's website URLs. Those are all call to actions, which impressions can help with. But just the fact of you seeing it is an impression. So just to get that out of the way. A view, again, is when someone actually clicks on the video and then watches the video. Um, so the difference between impressions and views is, is very different. Now, people wonder, well, why do I have so many impressions but nothing's happening? Well, that's why these analytics are actually helpful because they don't give you some insight. Now, one thing you can do from, let's just say, a PPC perspective, okay? I'm just going to use AdWords as an example. The paid advertising that you see on Google on the very top and on the very right whenever you search for results. Now, you might have a lot of impressions, and that will show up in your reporting, and you're wondering, okay, great, I have a lot of great impressions, but nobody's clicking on my ad. Um, that will tell you a couple things. One, that will tell you people are, it's being pulled up by the, the correct terms and the correct keywords, so the impressions are right. But the reason there's no click through and there's no one clicking on the actual ad, even though it's being seen a lot, is probably because it's just irrelevant to what people are wanting. So even though they're seeing it, they're not clicking on it because it's not relevant enough to them. So that will tell you, okay, maybe I need to change the ad or the ad copy. So the same thing works with the video and the, and the video aspect. Maybe it's the title of the video that needs to change. Maybe it's the description of the video that needs to change. Um, more than likely, since the impression is just going to be the title, as long as the title is still relevant to the actual content, the actual video itself, maybe try a different title and see if the different title will help out. Um, that's really all you can do when it comes to impressions because that's all they're going to see. They're going to see a thumbnail of the video and then the title. Um, the description and everything they're not going to see because they only see that once they actually view the video. So again, if you're at the first step of impressions, make sure that you're changing the title so it's relevant enough to the actual video being shown. 
once they actually do click on it and they do view it, you can also see from the analytics how long they're viewing the video. If it's one of those things where your video is getting a lot of bounces, and again, if you remember what I mentioned about bounce rates, bounce rates is when someone clicks on something and they view it and then they quickly leave it. Same thing with the video as it is on a website. If they click on a video to view it and they literally leave the video after five seconds, it's probably going to be considered a bounce. I believe it's 30 seconds or maybe a minute. I don't think it's a minute. I think it's 30 seconds or so. Um, might be a little bit shorter. I have to double check, but on what they consider a bounce or not, um, or what they consider a view or not. So as long as they're watching portion of the video, it'll be considered a view. If it's a five minute video, again, it'll be considered a view, but you don't want to have a video that long. You want to have a video again in small edible chunks. And if you need to create a part series, like multiple parts, you know, part one, two, and three, that works as well. I see a lot of YouTubers, a lot of professional YouTubers that do that. Um, they'll have videos that are maybe five or six minutes. Um, they might have videos that are longer just because they're vloggers and, and you know, they're, they, they blog online. So it's a little bit longer. And that type of audience is actually looking to, to sit there and watch it. Um, if it's too long, they might even do it in snippets of 10 minutes or 15 minutes, uh, but multiple parts as opposed to a long video. Because um, even from professional YouTubers, I can't sit there and watch an hour long video. It's too long. So you have to imagine how people are going to be when they view your videos. They want to make sure that it's not too long, that it's at least maybe, you know, definitely less than five minutes. Don't, don't ever go over five minutes. Maybe do a minute and a half, two minutes tops. Um, but you want to make sure that it's not too long and, again, not too short because then they're not going to really be interested if it's, you know, a 10-second video. 30 seconds minimum, two minutes max, I, I would recommend on that. If you don't know how to really track any of these factors on your own, again, let us know. We do all the analytics for you with our media service. Um, we do monthly analytical reports as well, and we kind of dial into all these metrics and are able to explain what these metrics mean. Again, this is going to be something that is a little time consuming and a little hard to kind of understand on the YouTube side of it. Uh, but again, if you do have a, a, a valid content library of media on there, of videos, definitely inquire about that. Let us know. We can kind of go over those analytics with you and let you know and kind of teach you how to actually read these analytical um, reports. It's going to be very important, especially in the beginning process, but it's going to definitely help you in the long run to, to make sure that you have video that you're not wasting your time with that you can actually utilize on your website. So website and social media integration is going to really kind of be the important part of doing all the video. You can have it on YouTube all, all day and all, all you want, but if it's not on your website and it's not on social media, you're going to greatly decrease the amount of views and impressions that you're going to get. Although it is the second largest YouTube channel, or sorry, second largest search engine in the world via YouTube, you still want to make sure it's hitting all different channels because of the fact that one, it's free, and two, um, that's pretty much where everyone's going to be. So one, social media being hugely popular from everything from Facebook to Twitter to uh, Google Plus to anything else that you want to put it on. A lot of people don't realize that YouTube itself is actually social media because one, it's attached to pretty much everything Google, uh, including Google Plus. But two, because of the fact that a lot of people leave comments, they leave reviews, um, there's a lot of things that you can actually get to your business from uh, just from the website itself, or sorry, just from the YouTube channel itself. So you want to make sure that you integrate it with your website, again, embedding the videos into the web pages, either the home page or specific pages that that video has to relate to, as well as different social media platforms. Again, like I mentioned, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Um, and then, of course, you want to make sure that you have a mobile-friendly website. So at the end of the day, having a professionally shot HD video that spotlights your practice or your business, again, isn't really effective if you don't have them on these, these pieces. So your YouTube visitors should be able to get to your website with a click of the mouse. It's really easy. It's in the description of your YouTube channel. Again, if it's optimized, it'll be there. And likewise, your, your website visitors should be able to get to your YouTube channel and other social media outlets with the click of a mouse. So you definitely want to make sure that those are intertwined, that those connect to each other. That way people have an easy way to access all the content available. Also, your website should be more mobile friendly than it currently is if it's not mobile friendly. And if you're not too sure if your website is mobile friendly, let us know. More than half of our website skins are actually mobile friendly out of the box. If you're on an older skin, though, definitely let us know. Um, give us a call. We can 
kind of do a, an assessment of your website where it currently is. If you're a current um, iMatrix client, Chiromatrix or Retmatrix client, let us know. We'll take a look at your current skin, see if you are on one of our older legacy skins, if maybe you need to update it to one of our newer mobile-friendly skins. Again, it's a huge, huge ranking factor that Google was imparting on with this latest uh, algorithm update that they did on the 21st of uh, April. They're starting to penalize websites that are not mobile friendly. So you want to make sure that your website is mobile friendly because when you have video and you have content on there and it's not mobile friendly, it's a lot harder for people to actually view it on their mobile device, which again is a huge, huge chunk of the, uh, of the market right now for when people are searching for any business in general. Google sees the analytics. They're acting accordingly by updating their algorithm, and you should make sure that you definitely do that as well. So not only will mobile users bounce quickly if they can't watch your video or browse your website from their device, but Google, again, is going to penalize those. So we want to make sure that you take care of that and give us a call. If you aren't too sure, let us know. We'll take a look at your website. And if you do have a mobile-friendly website, you are good to go. You're golden. So good job. Again, so a lot of people ask this question. What, what am I going to record all this video on? What am I going to record all this content on? I don't have a professional camera. I can't afford a professional videographer to come down. Um, a lot of people don't realize that if you really want to kind of just get a feel for it, and you want to start off, you know, just basic and just kind of understand, okay, this is this is what we need to do to get things started. Use your smartphone. I'm not gonna. I'm not sure who you know what kind of smartphones you all have, but even smartphones from ah man, I would even say five years ago should be. Uh, should suffice, to be honest. It's one of those things where you want to make sure that everything outside the scope of just the smartphone itself is taken care of. Your practice looks clean. Um, the lighting looks good. If you're going to have people in the video that they look well-groomed and they're, and they're dressed professionally, if their clients maybe kind of let them know ahead of time before you do like a video testimonial, that kind of thing. If you're taking uh, pictures of your practice, make sure that it's it's uh, in landscape mode, not, not portrait mode. And if anyone's not sure what that means, is putting the phone sideways um, like a hot dog, I guess you could say, as opposed to putting it vertical. Especially with iPhones nowadays, a lot of people, I see video all the time done the wrong way. People just hold the phone normally like they would, and they hold it in front of them and they start recording. Well, what happens is, especially with an iPhone, and I say an iPhone because iPhones actually show up worse than, than Android phones um, as far as the portrait format, you see these big black bars, one on the left and one on the right of the video. And you wonder, why does the video look like that? Why doesn't it go full screen? Because when you look at your screen, your screen is actually not a, a perfect square. Um, computer screens are actually landscape. They're actually long, uh, long ways, if you want, horizontal, if you want to think of it that way. And the best way to actually do it, to have it fit perfectly in that view scope, is actually going to have it horizontal. And a lot of people don't realize that. And I actually do it by habit. I do it horizontally. Because I, I realize that, and I know my TV, my computer screens, tablets, everything is horizontal uh, in nature. And so you want to make sure that you record that way. If you're also going to take a uh, photo, um, just like a photo of your practice or of the outside or inside, um, or take some pictures of your staff, make sure to do it horizontal as well. Um, now, phones that are five years ago, smartphones that are five years ago, I mean, they're like five megapixels or whatnot on on the uh, camera quality. That's seriously fine. Um, I have, I'm just going to use an example, I have a Galaxy S5, I believe, yeah, S5. The newest one that came out is an S6. I don't need it, my phone's fine, even the phone I had before, which is the S4, totally fine, probably even the S3 is totally fine. Now, from an iPhone point of view, even an iPhone 4, now they have the iPhone 6 now, which has a great camera, um, but even the iPhone 4 should be good enough. I think the iPhone 4 is 5 megapixels. So if you really don't have the equipment, someone has to have one of those phones. I mean, those are the two hottest phones now, uh, at least manufacturers go, uh, Android and Apple. Someone's going to have one of those two phones. Try, try those out. Try taking videos, taking uh, pictures of the, of the practice using those, and see how that works out for you. If you really want to kind of go the professional route, definitely, definitely do recommend that because there is a huge difference in quality. Now, Using these older model phones and, and, and uh, smartphones, again, like I said, they work. It's, it's one of those things where if I had to grade it from a 1 to 10, it's definitely, you know, I would say like a 7. Okay, it's not, not terribly bad, not completely awesome good, but it's not a 10. 
but it's still not terribly bad. It, it, it works, and it's good. But if you really want to have amazing pictures and, vi and videos and, and everything done professionally, professionally, uh, a professional videographer and photographer is definitely the way to go. Aren't you sure where to do that or where to go? Again, our media service does help out with that. We will send videographers and photographers to your practice to take professional videos, just like a documercial, just like a little infomercial of your practice, to put not only on your website, all the social media platforms, as well as on your YouTube channel, and they'll take still photos of the practice and your staff so that you guys can add to the website for your staff bios, even so you can have them professionally. Just have them on your, your, you know, your LinkedIn network, um, your professional network, whatever it may be. Um, it's very beneficial in that aspect. And they do advertising for video, just like I mentioned before. Uh, well, they do the video uh, syndication and advertising that way. So think of it that way. You know, we do recommend that a lot of these people just don't know how to do it, and we want to be able to help you out. But if you do want to try it on your own, use those tips that I mentioned. Put them sideways. Put it horizontal. Use your older phone if you need to, um, as long as it's not a phone that really looks pixelated. And be honest with yourself. If you take these videos and you take these uh, pictures and they don't look too good, then maybe your phone just isn't, isn't that great for it. And at least you tried. But I definitely would recommend trying. Um, but again, if you want the absolute professional route, which I do recommend, um, definitely look into our media service. That is something that will tremendously help your practice in the long run. So with all these things talked about and said, a lot of these, a lot of these kind of questions kind of come about. And I know some of you might have some questions. Um, so feel free to go ahead and type in the question answer module. Make sure that you know if you have anything that you aren't too sure about, go ahead and feel free to ask now. Um, again, if it's something that you aren't sure about that you need to talk about with your colleagues, give us a call, let us know. But just so you know, you don't really need to be a professional videographer to put an HD video that really showcases your practice or video on your website. Um, again, we can help with that heavy lifting if you aren't too sure, if you don't have the time to do it, if you just don't want to do it the wrong way, and you don't want to take any chances, you just want to do it the right way professionally, let us know. The statistics about video marketing do, however, really demonstrate that you need to have all these areas covered, all the media aspects from, from having the video on social media to your website to having an optimized professional YouTube channel. You want to make sure you capture these potential patients. You want to capture these potential clients before the competition does. Now, if you aren't sure about what you're doing, if, if you need to do this, if this is even the right decision for you, I guarantee your competition is doing this. And so you want to make sure that if you go this route, that you, you kind of scope out the competition and you make sure that, you know, if that's something that they're doing, you're not necessarily copying them, but you're, you're kind of mirroring what they're doing. Think of it this way. This is what I always tell people. They ask me this every single uh, webinar, every single time I have a consultation with them. I don't want to copy my competition. I want to be different than my competition. I don't want to do what they're doing. Well, think of it this way. Think of it like a car manufacturer, okay? I'm, I'm going to use Toyota and Honda real quick as an example. A lot of times there's cars with Toyota. They're, they're, they're Japanese and they're probably the two biggest, besides, you know, Nissan, they are two biggest competitors with each other. Well, what do they normally do? Okay, before cars were even invented, and I, I'm a, I'm a totally skew this because I know Ford, you know, invented the car. But let's just let's just totally change history here for a second. Let's say I created cars. Let's say I, I invented automobiles, right? And there's a competitor, um, or let's I'm sorry. Let's say the competitor created automobiles, and I want to get into the automobile game as well. Well, what do I do? Do I one just say, you know what? No, I'm going to go completely out of the. I'm I'm a I'm going to make a one wheel car. It's different. The way I do it, people are going to love it. Well, to be honest, if they're actually already making business doing it with four wheels, um, you don't really need to kind of change that because that's going to be a whole new product altogether. And, and you're going to have to go through all the research and all the ups and downs that that other business already went through to get to where they're at now. So what I recommend is you want to make sure that you take what they're doing and make that your own. Okay, You can still be different, but still be somewhat the same. Now, I don't know if anyone's kind of seen commercials or anything of Android, you know, the, the um, Google Android for, for cell phones, the operating system for cell phones. Their biggest pitch right now, because they're having a huge, huge battle with Apple, okay? Samsung and Apple have been having the longest battle forever, and they probably will forever, because they are the two biggest competitors in the, in the cell phone game. Um, Apple's biggest thing right now is to be unique from the competition, to be different from the competition. And if anyone remembers when Apple first came on board with their uh, with their computers, their Macintosh, um, their biggest thing was the whole 1984 thing, you know, which I, I think is hilarious because 
it's kind of come for full circle now. You know, don't be the same as anyone. Stand out from everyone kind of thing. That's just, like, that was their biggest thing, you know. Don't be a drone kind of thing, you know. Well, it's funny because now the way Apple is, is Apple's actually kind of gone that route. Everything looks the same. Um, now, it works for them. A lot of people love it. They love the simplicity. They love the design, the aesthetics. But everything looks the same. You, you can take, uh, minus the fact of it getting thinner, maybe. That might change. Maybe a little bit more rounded edges. But it's really kind of essentially the same from the old iPad to the new iPad. What's the difference? They look exactly the same, but the features are different. Faster processor, better uh, screen, colors more vivid, that kind of thing. But it looks exactly the same. And yours look exactly the same as everyone else. The only thing they really add is maybe white, maybe black, maybe silver, gold. Maybe they'll kind of change the color up. But it's really kind of the same. So how is Android, how is Android, one of the other biggest competitors out there, going to change and, and make themselves look different and stand out from the competition? Well, the same way that you guys can actually do that. So their biggest thing right now is what they do is they actually say, you know what, uh, be different, like be same, be the same or be similar, but be different. And what that really kind of means is Android, the operating system, they, they, they're selling the operating system. They're not selling the phone, which Apple's doing. Apple's selling the phone and their Apple iOS operating system. So it's one of the same. But what Android's doing is, you know what? Hey, love our software, love our operating system, but look at how many phones you can have with this one operating system. So you can be the same as everyone else, but also different at the same time. So what they did is they did a perfect example. They took the competitor's model of being the same, and they turned it to be their own. Now, it's really kind of what I want you guys to do, is I want you to take a look at the competition, see what works, see what they've done, and make it your own. If they've got a top 10 most frequently asked questions series on their, on their YouTube channel, do the same exact thing on your YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. But just make sure they're not the same top 10 questions that these guys are doing, because that will be a complete copy. Do your own top 10 questions. They might actually kind of intertwine with the other competitors' questions, because they're just similar questions that everyone's going to ask, which is fine, but your answer is going to probably be different and it's going to be different from the competitor. So that's going to help you to really jumpstart your marketing, jumpstart your practice if you just don't know the direction to go in. Let your competitor do all the work. Let your competitor go and, and do all the ups and downs that, so that you don't waste time doing it. And once they're done doing that and you actually see, hey, they got a ton of views on that video, let's do a video that's just like that, but in our own way. Do it. If they maybe have a new new equipment in their office that you don't have, but they're getting a lot of patients in there, consider maybe getting that equipment too. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. So keep that in mind when you're doing not only social media but also video. Um, and then if you do PPC, also think of it that way. So on to some questions. Feel free to go ahead and type them out in the question and answer module. Um, again, if you have questions about our media service, give us a call 1-800-IMATRIX. We do have a prompt on there depending on which industry you're in. Uh, we do have a couple questions here, so I'm going to go ahead and answer them. One is, do you work with vets? Yes, we do work with vets. Vets are actually one of our uh, oldest industries that we've been dealing with for quite some time. Uh, we have a lot of great custom veterinary content um, on our packages, on our services. Um, we do cater to a lot of vets. Uh, I think 6,000 or so vets um, in, in about 11,000 uh, or so clients that we have, 5,000 or 6,000 vets or so. So we have a lot of great vet clients. And a lot of them actually see a great success with our media service because, um, as you might know, a vet office, I, I love doing uh, content and things for, for our vet uh, industry um, because, especially with social media or whatnot, even video, because you get to see a lot of the pets. And a lot of people, everyone loves pets. You see puppies and you see all different types of different animals and cats and exotic animals. And it's really interesting. It's actually uh, pretty neat to see some of the uh, exotic uh, animal clinics out there that do video because you can see inside their practice. And it's kind of almost like a, like a mini zoo, if you want to think of it that way, depending on the type of animals that they see. So I definitely, definitely do work with vets. So YouTube versus Vimeo, copy of the content. So if you're saying, do I copy the content from video, Vimeo to YouTube? Um, to be honest, I mean, it's really kind of an exact copy of it. If you're going to put it on YouTube, Vimeo is probably the next best bet. I mean, you could put the same exact video um, on YouTube as, as, uh, as Vimeo. When it comes to the actual video itself, that you don't have to worry about copying um, if, of your own. When it's content, I know a lot of people worry, I don't want to have duplicate content, duplicate content. That's actually only uh, for actual written content on your website. 
So that's true. You don't want to have a duplicate content on multiple pages or multiple websites. Uh, but when it comes to video, I mean, video is video. I mean, you can have the same video on social media, on Vimeo, on Yelp if you have it on Yelp, um, your website. I mean, the same video. You want to you want to make sure it is the same video. <laughs> Let's just say that uh, because of the fact that it will increase the views. You don't want to spread it out multiple different types of videos for the same video. Um, don't think of it that way. So I hope that isn't confusing. I would honestly prefer, if it was my business, to have five videos, all with amazing views on it, than having 50 videos just because of the fact that I don't want to have the duplicate content of the same video. So 10 videos on how to you know, wash your cat's ears or something like that. I wouldn't do that. I would do the one video and then have it multiple different uh, places to have it because what's going to happen is you're going to just start spreading and thinning out your views. You don't want to do that. Videos are really only as good as the amount of views that they have, I guess you can say. Um, so you want to make sure if you do a video, only do it once and then you can have it spread across all the different channels, Vimeo, um, YouTube, uh, what other, other you know, video syndication ones out there. I, they're on the top of my tongue, so excuse me if I don't remember all of them, but there are a lot of good ones out there. Um, Meta Cafe. I mean, there's a lot of different ones that are out there. So yeah, definitely you want to use the same content on uh, YouTube as opposed to Vimeo. Now between the two, which one's better? I still think YouTube's better because YouTube is owned by Google. And again, it's the largest uh, you, uh, video upload site compared to Vimeo. I know Vimeo is up on the rise, but you, it's, it's not going to take out video or uh, YouTube. Definitely not going to take out YouTube. It's still going to be the king. I don't foresee it going down anytime soon. Um, same as Google, I don't really foresee it losing market share at all. Um, Bing and Yahoo have been really kind of trying to catch its tail on that, but I, I don't foresee that anytime soon. So. Awesome. So if anyone else has any more questions or if you have any questions that you want to take offline, definitely let us know and uh, we can help you out there. Give us a call, 1-800-I-Matrix. We will help you out with your media service or give you some answers to some of the questions that you have about media pertaining to your practice or your industry. And again, this video will be on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and uh, check out imatrix.com, and uh, you can go ahead and see on the top right all of our social media icons, including our YouTube channel. Feel free to go there, as well as we will send this out to anyone that has registered or has been uh, attending this webinar, which, again, I appreciate everyone here. And hopefully, unless otherwise, if you have any other questions, uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks again.